of you are, know who Princess K of the Milky Way is? There's gotta be some of you. you. Yeah, you know, Minnesota. Okay, so this might be the most underrated princess of our time. This is a title given to a young woman in the state of Minnesota every year. And more importantly, she gets her likeness carved into a 90 pound block of butter. <laughs> How amazing is that? I was talking to my brother about this last night. I was like, isn't that weird that we just thought that was normal? He's like, yeah, I guess. Like, <laughs> that was just the normal thing. We thought that happened everywhere. But if you were to ask this question into Google, they beautifully explain it in a featured snippet, right? They even have a butter image right there for you. And Google is getting so much better at answering these long tail queries, right? We know that this has been going on and it's continuing to evolve in this space. These are not to be confused with what Greg Gifford found, the answer box. How many ships are in the US Navy? At least 13, right? There's, there's at least 13. Great, but these don't mention a website. It doesn't pull content from a website. It's using other sources. Uh, and there's different types, right? Most of you are aware there's paragraph featured snippets, there's lists, these are in bullets and in numbers. We see tables. The videos are interesting because it pulls from the specific part of the video that it thinks will answer your query. And most recently, we've seen accordion featured snippets. So these are on mobile and they act a little bit like the people also ask boxes. So it provides a featured snippet and then it has different content underneath it to continue explaining things and it expands with a different source typically. Uh, and Stat just started tracking these, so pretty cool. But these things change, right? We have heard about this all week. This stuff comes and goes and new things pop up. In fact, in creating this deck, I came across one of these. Is that a paragraph or a list? I have no idea. We've never seen that. But this is sort of part of the process and something we have to embrace as an industry. And if there's two things you take away from my talk today, first and foremost, I hope it's this. You absolutely must be testing. You have to be testing in your space and with your websites. It's the only way for you to level up and know how to really get these featured snippets. The second is you're gonna see some things that I've experimented with, and I don't want you to get the idea that I'm encouraging anyone to create content for search engines. By all means, you should be creating content for people, right? Uh, and before we dive into the data, I wanna give a big thanks to Eric and Shatish who have helped put this data together. Eric from STAT, did all of this research, and a lot of you, this might look familiar, this is a refresh of STAT's featured snippet research. And so he did all the analysis and was just amazing throughout this whole process. And Shatish helped me dive into some featured snippet images, which have never been looked at before. So what we're gonna look at are never seen before facts about featured snippets, and I'm so excited. But I didn't want this to be a tour of facts. So while this first part is gonna be all about those facts, we really will dive into how, how do we, what do we do with that information? How can we make that work for your website? What kind of tests can be done? So to start, we did this research on the refresh of all of those same keywords that the research had been done previously. So it's about a million high priced cost per click keywords, right? And we focused on the mobile browser and at a very, very specific location. So as you learned earlier this week from Rob Bucci, national SERPs don't really exist, and we shouldn't rely on them. They're not as accurate as a very specific location. So that's what we looked at. And what we found was almost 24% of all search result pages have a featured snippet, and that these are on the rise, right? These are going up and to the right. Uh, they're up about over 160% since 2016. We also know that paragraphs and lists are by far the most common, by far. And just to touch briefly on people also ask boxes, we see them on 93.8% of featured snippet SERPs. It's crazy, 
These two are best friends. Almost any time you see that featured snippet box, this will follow, right? Interesting. On the flip side, featured snippets are only on around 34% of people also ask box SERPs. What does that mean? There's way more people also ask boxes. We saw around 65% of all search result pages had a PAA box. And Dr. Pete talked about this yesterday, right? These are going up and to the right way faster than featured snippets. It's fascinating. Really, really interesting space to keep an eye on. Something that surprised us was that half of all the featured snippet results were part of a carousel. And what I mean by carousel is this. We've all seen these, you do a search, and they're sort of, they're refinement queries. They help disambiguate what it was that you were searching for. And what's cool is that it populates a different featured snippet, many times from a completely different website. And so if you think about that for a second, if you're trying really hard to compete for a super popular search term, like I think I was searching what's the best beer in the world, and you can't rank for it, if you go niche, if you do something like ale and really dig into that, you could potentially have real estate on this search result. It's a really interesting space to keep an eye on. Uh, we discovered that recipe SERPs don't get featured snippets for some reason, but we do see them testing these cards, which are interesting. They continue to expand into the hundreds. Um, I was seeing most of them around maybe 105. And then they ask you, they sort of suggest you to send it to your Google Home for voice. And so that would walk you through the recipe, or if you had a voice display, it might show it, right? Super interesting. Something that we knew previously and that we can confirm today is that the higher you rank in search, the better your odds are in having that featured snippet box. Now, I know this graph looks a little crazy. These are the different types of featured snippets and where they rank in search results. It's really interesting. Uh, these are some of the start word triggers at the top. So you can quickly notice that how the, as the start word will oftentimes trigger a list. And the rest of the words oftentimes trigger paragraphs, um, but how is pretty strong for that video and the list. Now there's a lot of data coming at you. You guys can get all of these slides. Don't feel like you have to take notes. Paragraph triggers, these are some of the most commonly uh, included words within the paragraph featured snippets that we discovered. And it makes sense, right? Does, much, between, list triggers, best, types, brands. It totally makes sense, especially with these tables. Rates, sizes, prices, those might be things that you would rather see in a table. And now, some of the research that I had Shatish do was looking at those images, right? I've always been curious about that, and I know many of you have, and there's not really been any research around them, right? What, what are the common sizes? Where, where do they rank in search results? Where's Google pulling these images from? And that was the first thing I asked Shatish to look at. And we figured out that around 15% of all image URLs aren't in the organic results that we have access to, meaning they likely aren't, they aren't on page one or page two. It's wild, right? Google's pulling these images from completely other sources. And you see that drop in that number one position. Does anyone wanna guess why? Our thoughts are that that is because that's the frequent, or that's the featured snippet URL, right? And then it's pulling from the rest of the SERPs as it goes. Pretty interesting. And one other thing I would like to note is that we discovered that the most frequently displayed size of those images was 120 pixels by 90 pixels. However, I want you to take this with a grain of salt. This is what they're displaying. This isn't necessarily the size of the images that are being pulled. They're often stretching and changing the image to fit that size. But you should probably keep that ratio in mind, right? It's good to have in your back pocket. But this is why you must be testing stuff. And this is where we get into how can we use this information? What can you take away from this today? So we're gonna divide it up into a couple different sections. Uh, first, we're gonna address the most popular question about featured snippets. 
uh, who's winning in this space, and then we're gonna break some things, and I'm gonna give you some actions to take. Uh, and big shout out to the community and honestly all of you for being here and for asking good questions and for fueling this sort of research. We couldn't do this sort of stuff without you, and we really take your emails, your messages, your questions and thoughts into consideration. So please continue to stay active. Uh, it's been a huge driving force and so much fun to incorporate. All right, so we've heard about this all week. Do featured snippets drive traffic? It's the number one thing that people love to talk about featured snippets. And I'm very excited to address this and hopefully put a close on this question for now, right? We see lots of conflicting stories. Some people say, Google in particular, says that it do, they do drive traffic. Other sources say they don't. And so in addressing this question, I thought, okay, how can I come up with a solid answer for all of you? And the way that I went about it was grabbing Google Search Console data. So I pulled a ton of Google Search Console data, and thank you if you sent any in. And I looked at the keywords, the ranking position, and the click-through rate. Right? Keep that in mind. And as I'm looking at all of that, I split the data in half. And I bucketed the keywords that show a featured snippet and the keywords that don't. And right away, I started to see a problem. And that was that the average ranking position for these two buckets was wildly off. And the median, right? They weren't the same, meaning that that would obviously impact the click-through rate across these buckets. So what I did, was I basically cherry-picked deleting different keywords in each bucket until the averages and the median position ranking was about the same. So then we could really kind of look at what was the click-through rate on featured snippet keywords and non. And when I explained this to Eric, who did a lot of this research, he was very quick to point out that this was just gross. <laughs> that was a gross way to analyze this data. It's not statistically significant, um, but it was really all I had to go off of, and I think it's worth including here, just because we did see about a 40% difference, right? Um, so on average, around 40% less clicks would go to the keywords with no featured snippets. However, there are so many other variables here. There are so many other variables. And I want you to be super, super skeptical anytime you see a featured snippet traffic research study or paper or white paper. I call bullshit. There is no way to really identify if you're getting traffic from a featured snippet or not. There's just no way. We can't see that in Google Analytics. Click through. Uh, rate providers, clickstream providers have trouble identifying that as well. It's next to impossible to identify, and I feel like the only people that truly know that answer is Google. And let's ask ourselves something. Who do we think gets the most clicks on the search result page? It has a featured snippet, and historically, we know people click most frequently at the top. Where do we think most people are clicking? I would assume that it would be the featured snippet box, right? Perhaps it's a bit less, and I totally have empathy for those that have concern over people staying on the SERP. I get that, I totally get that. But I think we have to address this question of why traffic, right? Why are we so concerned about traffic? Why not branding? Why not messaging? Why not share a voice? And quite frankly, who is gonna go to their boss and say, oh, you know those key words we had for our SEO strategy? We're not gonna do you know, this, this bucket of them because they have featured snippets. You're not gonna do that, right? Those are likely important key words that you need to include in your plan. And we have to embrace this. Featured snippets aren't going anywhere. They're just not. And I think it's time that we kind of learn to navigate the water's a bit better. So my whole stance on this is that it doesn't matter if they get more traffic. They're present in some SERPs and they're present and non-present in others, right? That's just the world we live in and it's gonna continue to change. Shifting gears, who's winning in the featured snippet space? This was pretty interesting. So we looked at the top 100 domains 
that rank for featured snippets. And I identify the top 10 here. I was pretty, I was pretty curious to see YouTube at the top. That was interesting. Wikipedia makes sense, right? They format, they format all of their stuff so well that they're just spoon feeding entities and nouns and you name it to Google. And when I broke these out across the 100 websites by type, something was just quickly very clear. Informational sites dominate featured snippets, absolutely dominate. And when you break that out by the specific type of informational sites, it's financial informational sites, it's educational sites, really, really interesting stuff. Uh, but I think there's things that we can learn here. Something that stuck out for me in this list was socialworkguide.org. They have a DA of 35, a modest DA of 35, and they are ranking number fifth overall. They only have 260 pages, and if you look at any social work featured snippets, they completely dominate, even in this one that has carousel items, right? You click on California, they have it. Texas, they have it. And when you go to their site, it just makes sense. They have all the information you could possibly need to know in making a decision like this. They have graduation rates, they have the different programs, they have contact information and reviews. It's really comprehensive, good stuff. Now, what, again, how can we sort of work on applying all of this information? What do we do with it? So I thought it would be really fun to break stuff. So my motto has always been, <laughs> you aren't trying hard enough unless you're breaking stuff. I really believe in that. I think there is a lot we can learn from failing in SEO and as an industry. And it gives you confidence to have a better grasp of what's going on in this featured snippet space. So this was a featured snippet I discovered that Moz had for Reddit advertising costs which I thought was a pretty random one that we had. And the first thing I noticed was that cost, period, was the first thing, right? Kind of strange. And when I went to the page, I saw that that was marked up in an H4 tag. And I thought, do headers matter in featured snippets? You know, what kind of impact would this have if I just removed it? And Google removed it. So that was interesting. You also noticed that the image disappeared. And you'll see the images kind of fluctuate quite a bit on these. So how often do we hear SEO say, make your content longer to entice the click, right? We always hear this. If you're in a feature snippet box and it's a list, make your list you know, more than seven items long because we want to go after this more items, read more. That's what we want to target because we believe it's going to increase click-through rates, and it does makes sense to some degree, correct? So I was experimenting with this and I thought, okay, what if I make this longer to get a read more? And so I extend the sentence and Google just replaced it with something else. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Uh, so I go back to the drawing board, I switch it back and it was back. And if you're wondering how I'm doing all this, I literally just have another window open with Google Search Console and I'm requesting it to be re-indexed. Um, and it happens very quickly. And I can see the results Im almost immediately on my phone for most of these. Um, so it was back. What if we do a barely longer version? What if we just add the word unfortunately? Right, what would they do? Gone, placed us with these guys. <laughs> Thought, okay, now I'm just getting desperate. What if I just add another period, make it look like it's trailing off? Right, maybe some people will click more. There's something more there, gone. The moral of the story is that if you want 271 character featured snippet that you own longer for something like that, Google might potentially show 115 character one instead. It's wild, like we hear these norms about featured snippets all the time and we ra rarely challenge them. And so what I want all of you to think about today is like, how can we start challenging this stuff more? And how can you experiment more with this in your space? Uh, and seeing that this was such a touchy featured snippet that we would lose so quickly, I thought, what do the other industry advertising costs featured snippets look like? How can I make this 
day a little bit better. And something that became quickly apparent, and that was across the board, if you do YouTube advertising costs, LinkedIn advertising costs, they have that as the heading of the featured snippet. I guess if we want to call it like that. Uh, so I thought, okay, well, what if I add that to the page? So I add Reddit advertising costs, because it looks like Google wants that. It's back, right? And it has that included, but they paired it back to 158 characters for the description. Interesting, right? Super interesting stuff. This is why you have to be testing. You absolutely must be testing your space. Let's do another one. This one, Dr. Pete, I'm so sorry if you're in here. Uh, you wrote this post a while back, and I discovered that it ranks for a featured snippet. How much money does Google make? And something that I was thinking about and looking at this is it's marked up in a paragraph, obviously, right? And it's a paragraph on the page. We always say you should format your content in the way that the featured snippet is formatted. But have we ever tried to change the formatting? Have we ever tried to take a paragraph and make it into a list? Uh, so I, <laughs> I decided to give this a shot. I changed the paragraph to bullets. And interestingly, it shortened the featured snippet. And Google just took the first bullet and the last bullet. I thought, OK, that was interesting. What if I add a table? What would they do? And it was just gone, right? Just gone. <laughs> I thought, oh, but we're supposed to keep updated content. Maybe Google wants to serve really nice, updated, relevant content about revenue or something. I add that, still gone. So I restore the original markup. She's back, look at her. And then I think, okay, what if I update the content within the paragraph? What if I keep it the way that they want it and I just update the content? It's so gone, you guys. You can't find this Moz result on the first 10 pages of this search. And <laughs> I was like, oh shit, like, what did I do? Ooh, I'm in trouble. And I have this hunch that it was because I kept requesting them to index the same page with these little tweaks. And perhaps, you know, I was stupid and on the same IP address, right, and doing these searches, and they might have had something you know, trigger that, um, but it's a completely different search result page now. Really interesting, really interesting stuff. Uh, let's do another one. So I thought this could be a very valuable featured snippet from Oz, how to find backlinks, right? And Brian Childs wrote this really great article all about it, and I thought, well, what if I just format it in the way that I think Google wants it and see if they take it, right? And sure enough, we got it. And those were literally all the changes I made. There was text in between the steps, but I just made it more concise and more descriptive. Um, and apparently it's still there today. Uh, one more, if you were here a few years ago, you might have seen my talk where I accidentally had a typo in a meta description and I lost the featured snippet. And I was thinking in doing some of these, I thought, how important are typos? Right? How does that work? Especially for a primary keyword, like let's just use Facebook. Let's just botch that word in this post and see what happens to that featured snippet. So this is the content that Google's directly pulling for that featured snippet. We'll go back here. How to boost your Facebook group. And they took the typos. These are things I can't explain, right? And I don't know if this would necessarily happen in other spaces, very likely not. Right, this is why you've got to test some of this stuff out. And I was thinking maybe we could test something today. Uh, so I saw some stuff on Twitter about Forbes, which made me laugh and feel I felt seen. Uh, but Forbes ranks for 10x content. And they're literally just stealing Rand Fishkin's writing and his term and all that good stuff. And I was thinking, Moz deserves to rank for that or SparkToro, right? Like, why is Forbes in that featured snippet? So I was thinking, and hopefully we don't, I would suggest we don't tweet about this maybe, maybe keep this under the radar. I hope someone wasn't super fast and already did that. Um, but if we could do a search and click on Moz, could we get it to swap out? I have no idea. But I know that it's interesting to test this space and to start 
to you know really rock the boat a little bit in figuring out how we can how we can make more opportunities for our clients and for these websites. Um, so if you could, if you can't do it right now, I suggest doing it later when you're out maybe at your hotel or out at the garage party, which can be so much fun. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and click on Moz, right? Let's see if we can get this to flip. I have no idea. I'll buy everyone a beer if it flips. I'm just kidding. <laughs> now I'm nervous. I'm just kidding. Ooh, okay. Uh, seven actions for you to take. How do you, how can you walk away, go home, and use this information? First and foremost, you have to know what keywords provide featured snippets that you rank on page one for. That is your sandbox. It's beautiful. That is where all your opportunities lie. And there's a really easy way to do this in Keyword Explorer. You type in your site and you filter by ranking one through 10. And then you put that into a list and you can select featured snippets and you see all of the opportunities available. You can also filter from there by monthly volume, difficulty, click-through rate. Um, there's obviously all sorts of things you can do with this data. Uh, number two, know the searcher's intent. This is so, so important, and I love that this has been talked about lately. If you write a really groundbreaking article on how to tool leather, it likely won't rank, right? Because it's so visual. People need to see images. They need to see this performed. You have to know the type of intent and the type of content a user is looking for. Provide succinct answers. We saw this earlier with this other website that kept beating us out of the Reddit advertising costs. The more succinct and the better summarized, the better. And I think this also has something to do with voice. Have you ever asked Google Home a question and it just felt like it was so long? And it probably wasn't all that long, but the shorter, the better, right? Really interesting. And something that you can do right away is also just to add summaries to popular blog posts. Add too long, didn't read to them. Right? Summarize the popular content you already have. Healthline does this so well with this weight loss article. It's super long, comprehensive, it's got all this stuff. And at the bottom, they have a summary of all that information. And it ranks for tons of featured snippets. It does incredibly well. And I think there's a lot we can learn from formatting pages like that. Uh, in doing the MozCon rehearsal, Joy Hawkins, uh, gave me such a beautiful tip that she has allowed me to share here. And I love the story as well. There was some, you know, kind of no-name SEO on a forum, and she or he was talking about how they have successfully been able to grab all these featured snippets. And they were saying how most of it was crafted around two words. And that was, here's how. So they would create this content, and then they would include, here's how, and they would have information summarized. Brilliant. I haven't tested this. Um, I think it's fun to share and to see if this, this works, if this catches any for you, um, and I really appreciate Joy for sharing that. Number five, identify commonly asked questions, right? We know that questions trigger featured snippets, and if they don't, they could in the future. So one way I like to find questions is in Keyword Explorer. I know there's tons of tools out there, but we have a R questions filter. And some of you might be looking at this and thinking, okay, that's cool, but where to buy beer near me and where can I buy beer near me is pretty similar, right? And isn't that the most annoying part of keyword research is having like so many iterations of the same thing? Uh, that's why we have this filter to group keywords by low, medium, and high lexical similarity. I don't know what I would do without this filter. I really, really love this part of the tool because it just makes my job a lot faster. Uh, source questions from PAA boxes, like Dr. Pete said. Go check out what he's working on and find opportunities there. I think that's a super smart way to go about it. And one little hack that I've used for years is to interview the experts. Right? They know the answers to the most popular questions better than anyone. And you can do what Ross Simmons was talking about. Remix that stuff. 
right? Turn it into an image with the information. Turn it into a slide share. You can do all sorts of things with that content once you have it, and to have it in a rich form to start with is so, so powerful. Number six, this is interesting. No, okay, so this has been talked about a ton this week, but I don't feel like it's really resonated because I feel like, for the most part, when you hear the word API, we get a little shell shock, right? We're like, well, maybe I'm not technical enough, maybe I don't have the chops to use it. Did you guys know that you can Google, Google NLP API, and the front end is available for free? You can literally copy and paste text into Google's own natural language processing and get that information back out. You can see what they recognize as entities. You can see the sentiment, the syntax, and perhaps, most importantly, the categories and the salience or confidence score that they apply to them. I highly suggest, if you are trying to compete for a featured snippet and perhaps you're bouncing back and forth like I was doing earlier, take your content and put it in here and see how it's categorizing it, and then do it for your competitor. Oftentimes, you will see the site that's a little bit lower have multiple diluted categories. It's fascinating and a great, easy way to analyze your content. And it's free. It's available, and you don't have to write a line of code. It's all online. Number seven is to monitor these featured snippets. Right? We have to keep track of these. They're continuing to change. How do we do that? Uh, there's a number of tools, but Stat is one of my favorites. And that's because you can click on all of the featured snippets that you currently own and add a dynamic tag. So this will follow those snippets as they fluctuate. And from there, you can set up an alert to notify you anytime you gain or lose even just one featured snippet. It makes it super, super easy. And if, if after all of this, you're still like, okay, these are great, I'm gonna try to do some of these, but what if I get in one of those situations where like, I still just don't know how to rank for a featured snippet, I have no idea what I'm doing, I can't get this. Uh, I have one final tip, which I find really interesting, and that is if all else fails, leverage ranking third-party sites. This is so key, and this can I think this can help a lot of people in this room. So I was doing a search for who is the best soccer player, and obviously I wanna click on in the world because that seems like the most comprehensive thing. And I see this LinkedIn featured snippet. So I go and two things stand out, right? Like right away, two things. This person's only written seven articles and this article is from 2016. This must be so good, you guys. This must be the best content on soccer players of all time. This is very exciting. Can't wait. So, scroll down, and I'm reading, and I see this source link at the bottom of the first soccer player. And I go to the biography, and it's verbatim what's on that LinkedIn post, verbatim. I continue down the page, and I find other Wikipedia. All of this is copy and pasted, all of it. I was shocked. And this is for a pretty competitive, highly searched term, right? I'm not suggesting you copy and paste on third-party sites, but leverage them, right? If you see Quora ranking for a particular keyword that you're trying to gain visibility with, play around with Quora, play around with SlideShare. Don't be afraid to leverage these other sites. It's really, I think it's really fun stuff. So the main takeaways that I hope you get from this talk is to win through testing, right? You have to apply and play around with this stuff in your space. Uh, write quality content for people, right? Not search engines. Find those featured snippet keywords that you already rank on page one for. That's where all of your opportunities are. Explore how they're formatted. Learn from not just informational sites, but also from any sites that currently have a featured snippet in a space that you desire. Uh, and make sure you're summarizing that content and don't be afraid to go niche. So super fun. I really hope this inspires some of you to go forth and break stuff. Uh, I will be around afterwards and yeah, it'll be fun. Thank you. <laughs>